Hey there, it's Mike and Dom with Catching Z's Outdoors. Today we're going to be taking you through a video on one of the most deadliest weapons in the canal. Our go-to weapon whenever we can't catch anything. <laughs> Mike and I have been fishing around the Cape and in the Cape Cod Canal for many years now. A few things have stayed constant in recent years, and that is our choice of lure, our go-to guy, and that is the Savage Gear Sand Eel. It is very common to see the Savage Gear Sand Eel used along the canal, and that is for a good reason. Both beginners and experts are using this lure to land large fish, and so can you. There are a few things about the lure that makes it great. One being, it's inexpensive, it's very easy to use, you can personalize it to any way you want, and attracts monster fish. And if you're not using this lure, you are missing out. So we're gonna take you through everything you need to know about this lure, how to use it, and how to land big fish. Before we get started, be sure to subscribe and turn the notifications on, the little bell right next to it, if you wanna see more up-to-date videos and tips and tricks on fishing the Cape. So let's jump right into it. So to start it off, we're going to talk about the size of the lures that we use. They range anywhere from five inches or four and a fifth um, ounces, all the way up to eight inches, and that's roughly five and three quarter inch. Um, so there's many different factors that kind of go into, you know, what kind of weight you want to select, what kind of length you want to select for when you're fishing. Um, a few of those factors include the current the depth at which you're fishing, what time of the year it is, you know, are you going for schoolies, are you going for big bass, um, and also you want to be really important with the rating on your pole. There's a rating on your pole that basically tells you, um, you know, what types of weights you should be using when casting. And you want to make sure you really don't want to go over that because I, I'm guilty of that. I went over that and I snapped one of my ugly sticks. It was not a very good time, but um, make sure you stay inside that rating. Um, I can tell you from, from experience, it's not good when you break a pole in the canal and all, you know, the, the guys are laughing at you and you're just like, all right. <laughs> People are catching fish yeah, next to you. Yeah, it's not a fun time, so. <laughs> so as far as the current goes, at least in the canal, um, the smallest lure we're going to throw is the seven and a half inch lure. Um, it's the one you know, Dom's holding right there. Uh, it comes in at, I think, right over three ounces or so. Um, and you really want to use that as a kind of an all around lure. Um, if you don't know what to get, that's the one you want to get is the, uh, the seven and a half incher. Um, most poles are rated to hold up to you know, say three, four ounces. Uh, so you should be pretty good there. Mm -hmm. um, as the current gets stronger, you know, going either one way or the other, whether it's in the canal or whether you're fishing an inlet or, um, you know, a, a rock jetty, um, the faster the current, the heavier the lure that you want to be casting. Um, and this is just, you know, plain and simple, you want to get the lure down to the bottom of the, the water, um, you know, into the rocks. Uh, that's where the bass are going to be hiding. So you want your lure where the, uh, the fish are hiding. Um, so faster currents, you want a heavier eel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And we kind of just like touched on the depth right there as well, as Mike just said. Um, obviously, if you know you're fishing in 60, 70 feet water, um, you're not going to be using this little guy. You're going to be using one of the big boys, the eight inches or the seven and a half inch. Um, that's kind of self-explanatory. You know, you're going to wait there for four minutes for this little guy to sink to the bottom. So um, you definitely want to make sure you're using the correct weight range for your depth. Um, so next we're going to go about um, the timing of when you're fishing. Uh, so you come in early season, um, you're going to get a lot of schoolies, which are um, small fish for those of you who don't know, small stripers is what we call them. Um, they're not going to really attack these unless you have a really ambitious fish. So, you know, this is the only time of the year come, you know, early May, late April, um, where I'll, you know, I'll come down to one of the smaller ones for the canal. Um, I would never throw this small one in the canal. Other parts of the Cape, we do use these for schoolies, especially on the boat. 
only, you know, in late April, early May, are you using anything smaller than the seven and a half incher. So next I wanna just, you know, touch on the colors. Um, you know, Savage Gear has a whole bunch of different colors out there. Um, and, you know, they're constantly adding new ones, it seems, every year. Our, you know, personal go-to is the, the mackerel here. Uh, but there are a couple other ones that we'll use kind of throughout the season, um, especially the the pink one and the chartreuse ones um, are you know my my second kind of go to colors, uh, especially when everybody else and their brother are throwing the the mackerel. Uh, I like to try to mix it up, and you know the way I see it is the whole idea of a lure is to catch the fish's attention. So mm. if you can you know give it a, a different color that they're not used to seeing that might produce a strike when otherwise you know they're just kind of passing through the canal and um you know mm -hmm. not wanting to bite right i'm glad you brought that up too as well um I, I mentioned on the timing as the weight timing also comes in with the color um obviously you want to use the lure that the fish are feeding on so you know come the early summer late spring you want to use you know one of these pink guys might be a good idea because it resembles a squid. Whereas, you know, as soon as the mackerel come in, it's just kind of overtaking it with the mackerel. You see everybody throwing the mackerel. Um, so if you're going to buy one, get the mackerel. I highly recommend it. Also, you really want to stock up on tails, um, like the extra tails that you rig onto it. Because, you know, come mid-June, when word's out that the stripers are here and everybody's catching, you ain't gonna find one of these anywhere anywhere that, i'm telling you that happened to us last yeah. year out of stock ever even online you might think now it's on back order for a few weeks and you miss the whole season right. so you really want to get these in stock the mackerel um can't stress it enough um also we like to use the black or really anything dark colored at night um we just feel that's the best fit for it it's kind of like a shadow of fish um so that's kind of our go-to there but um Highly recommend the mackerel. I would keep going with that. So now we're gonna get into the casting portion of the Savage Eel. Uh, so let's get right into it. Prior to your first cast, you wanna read the current. You wanna see what direction it's going in and how strong it is. In this particular case, the current is going from left to right and is fairly strong. So this means I will cast to the left, which is up current, and let the lure sink. By the time the lure is at the bottom, the lure will be straight in front of me for an easy retrieval. So again, the whole idea of this lure is that it's bouncing off the bottom. So as you know, you're know, you reeling it in, um, it's hitting the rocks on the bottom and then you're gonna jig it up, it's gonna come up and then you know, same thing. And that you know, repetitive motion is what's gonna really attract the fish. You've got fish that are holding you know, right behind big boulders, um, staying out of the current and you know, they're up opportunistic feeders and you know, they're only going to you know hit a lure um, when it's convenient for them so if you're getting it down into where they're hiding um, you've got a way better uh, chance for success so there's not really one correct way to jig um, there's many different styles one thing we will say is that if the current is not very strong then you should be jigging pretty fast. Um, the reasoning behind that is it'll take less time for your lure to hit the bottom again because um, it's not being pulled by the current. So you can see here Mike is jigging um, fairly slow so that means it would be a fast current and he's just allowing the eel enough time to get to the bottom before he jerks it back up. So then finally we just wanted to touch upon kind of what we do to our lures. Um, you know, they're new out of the box, they, they're bright and shiny, but you know, the one thing that we'll do is glue the hook, um, to the actual soft, um, tail. Um, we find that, you know, you go through a lot less tails with the tail glued. They're, they're just way more durable. And when you go to change out your tails, you also, you know, glue them on again, um, to, you know, just prolong the life of the the tail there mm -hmm. uh so finally we want to mention that um you know savage eels are what we use um there's many other brands of um jigs and rigs that you know we can use um for instance this is one of the you know the cape cod brands um sand eels 
these work perfectly fine guys um no problem at all with them just be careful with the weights a lot of them get really heavy um make sure you don't go over the rating on your pull um but you want to really you know for fishing the cape cod canal you really want to ramp the weight up to your maximum um, rating for your pull um because i mean <clears throat> at any time the current is really ripping through there maybe going eight nine knots um you really want to get it to the bottom you don't want your eel on top um so we find that's the most important thing this is catching z's outdoors if you enjoyed the video please hit the like button and make sure you subscribe for more content we'll catch you on the water thanks guys